At the same time that physics was unraveling the secrets of the building blocks of matter, we discovered that space and time were not as simple as previously thought. Observers moving at different speeds or experiencing different gravitational fields do not share the same perception of length or the same rate of flow of time. Moreover, the answer to the question, what is happening right now elsewhere in the universe, depends on your speed. Observers flying past each other at different speeds will not consider that the same events occur right now elsewhere in the universe. Simultaneity is relative. These relativistic effects, as they became known, can account for gravity itself. According to general relativity, what we perceive as the force of gravity is a warping of space and time around massive objects. By applying the equations of general relativity to the universe as a whole, we discovered that the presence of mass within space-time makes space change scale. This effect was confirmed experimentally when we discovered that galaxies are moving away from each other, carried away by this stretching of space. The universe is expanding, and by running the movie backwards in our imagination, we can deduce that the early universe, billions of years ago, was a soup of matter much denser than atomic nuclei and much hotter than the interior of today's hottest stars. We gave the name Big Bang to this extreme state and Big Bang Theory to the model that describes the evolution of the universe between the Big Bang and today. By analyzing the leftover light from the early universe, what we call the cosmic microwave background, and by tracking supernova explosions throughout the universe's history, we can precisely follow the expansion. We now know that the Big Bang occurred 13.8 billion years ago, give or take a few tens of millions of years. That physics describes the known universe in impressive detail is now beyond doubt. Classical physics is so well understood that we can send spacecraft on journeys of many years across the solar system and they reach their destinations within seconds of the predicted arrival time. Relativistic effects are observed all the time in particle accelerators, and even the subtle effect of gravity on time, predicted by general relativity, is confirmed by the corrections that have to be applied to the clocks used in the Global Positioning System satellites. Predictions of quantum mechanics have been verified in a wide range of settings. The precise value of one parameter called the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron has been calculated theoretically with more than 10 significant figures and the measured value agrees with it. The standard model of particle physics has even predicted the existence of a crucial particle, the Higgs boson, before it was observed in the largest particle accelerator ever built. So, is this, at last, the time to say, once and for all, this is physics, and leave it at that? Not quite. The same analysis that allows us to calculate the time elapsed since the Big Bang also reveals that most of the mass of the universe is not made up of ordinary matter, that is, neutrons, protons, and electrons. 27% of the mass of the universe is in the form of particles that have not yet been directly observed and that interact very weakly, or not at all, with ordinary matter. We can only feel the gravity of this dark matter, by the way it influences the rotation of galaxies, but we don't know what it is made of. Another 68% of the mass of the universe seems to reside in space itself. If we could remove all the matter in a given volume of space, what would be left would not be nothing. The vacuum itself has mass, and the term dark energy is often used to describe this property of the vacuum. There are also subtle incompatibilities between the basic principles of general relativity and quantum mechanics. Each theory is spectacularly valid in its own domain, but when both are needed at the same time, for instance if we want to build a detailed model of the ultra-dense state that our universe was in 13.8 billion years ago, then everything falls apart. This means that when physicists say that the universe is 13.8 billion years old, they only mean that current physics can accurately describe the preceding 13.8 billion years of the history of the universe. What came before that 
if there was even a before, is still off limits to our understanding. Even if we eventually discovered the identity of dark matter and succeed in reconciling the theoretical basis of general relativity and quantum mechanics, the ultimate question, why, will still be there. Why are the laws of physics the way they are, and not in some other way? Throughout history, many physicists have hoped that we could eventually show that there is only one logically possible physics the one that we actually observe in the universe. But more and more, this hope is fading. The models of physics are extremely successful, but they contain several fundamental constants that have to be set to specific values to reproduce what is actually observed. For example, there is no fundamental reason why the ratio between the strength of electromagnetism and gravity has the value it has. Relative to gravity, electromagnetism could have been much stronger or much weaker. If we modify the value of the fundamental constants in the laws of physics, sometimes even by small amounts, the complex structures that our lives depend on, from atoms to stars, no longer form. This problem, called fine-tuning, can be solved in the old-fashioned way by saying that the gods made the universe that way and control its behavior through their actions. Or we can posit the existence of a multiverse made of a very large number of universes, each with a different combination of fundamental constants. In most universes, no structures form and nothing interesting happens, but no living beings are there to complain about it. Only in universes where the fundamental constants are just right for complex structures to form will physicists evolve and ask why their universe is the way it is. Most physicists don't like the idea of the multiverse, because if it is true, it means that they have devoted their lives to master only one physics of one universe instead of the physics of the universe. This is the story so far. Be it one of many possible physics or the one and only physics, this is physics today. What physics will be in the future, we'll find out together.